When World War II broke out, the Disney studio was prepared to do its part. As a result of the attack on Pearl Harbor, more than 500 soldiers moved onto the Disney Studio lot in Burbank, supporting various anti-aircraft installations located in the hills around Los Angeles. Veteran Disney animator, story man, and director Jack Hanna recalls what happened. The day after the bombing at Pearl Harbor, uh, I was quite anxious to get to the studio to see what the situation was going to be. Uh, and I found utter chaos. Everybody was in the same uh, frame of mind I was, confused and didn't know what was going to happen. And uh, we didn't know that Walt was uh, making, uh, making arrangements already to do uh, training films for the Army and Navy, but I'm sure this had been planned earlier. While some Disney employees went off to war, others with deferments or reassignments began work on training films. The Disney stars were properly outfitted. And Disney's war effort was on. Okay, soldier. Walt Disney and his brother Roy, business partners from the outset, faced a depletion of the studio workforce. Drastic cuts were made in the feature film production schedule, and preparations on Alice in Wonderland and Peter Pan were abandoned for the duration of the war. Popular legend tells the story of an animator who stopped work on the wind in the willows to join the army and returned four years later to continue animating the exact same scene of the film. Although training films such as aircraft landing signals and four methods of flush riveting were the mainstay of the studio's film production during the war, Disney also scored impressively with victory through air power. It was a visually stunning animated film, which argued convincingly that World War II would be won or lost through the use of aircraft. At the same time, Donald Duck starred in several of the most popular Disney films. In a memorable Academy Award-winning short, Der Fuhrer's Face, Donald's work in a German ammunition factory turned out to be only a frightening nightmare. And in another, he realized that paying taxes meant helping to win the war. Just address it to your local collector of internal revenue. Okay, so long. And Donald often appeared in wartime cartoons as a flustered draftee with a burly, perplexed Pete as his stern drill sergeant. I said don't move! The audience uh, really uh, took to them immediately and uh, because naturally it was a natural thing for the death trying to uh, live up to a big guy, but... Uh, the thing is, a duck would only take it so long, and then he'd uh, he'd reverse the uh, thing and uh, and uh, end up uh, <laughs> getting the best of the situation. Repeat. Donald also suffered as the victim of his nephew Huey, Dewey, and Louie's ingenious pranks. Surprisingly, Donald's service to his country did not end when the war did. Promoted to Sergeant Duck, he finally received his Army discharge papers in 1984 in the middle of a year-long 50th birthday celebration. Joining Donald was his loyal friend, Clarence Ducky Nash. Uh, it's a great surprise, uh, something I never expected. Well, I always expected it to happen sometime now. It's a great pleasure to... Nash, an endearing figure to Disney fans young and old alike, was the one and only voice of Donald Duck for over five decades, a partnership that sadly came to an end with Ducky's death in February of 1985. But one needs only to look back at Donald's wartime contributions for an example of this brilliant team in action. Through Nash, Hannah, and the entire animation staff, Donald emerged as one of the nation's leading heroes. As the average American with something to contribute, Donald played an important role in Disney's war effort. One of the biggest attractions in the Disney family of animated characters, he provided Americans with some lighthearted moments during the troubled days of World War II. I'm glad to be a citizen of the United States of America.